Well, the topic that was recommended uh, via YouTube for this week was about crows and you know, learn more about crows. And, and also uh, the question that came along with that was, should I try to attract crows to my backyard? So I thought the, the best way to answer that question is to tell you about crows and their kinfolk, their allies, as we call them, uh, and the corvid family, and let you make your decision whether you, you want to attract them or not. I have done an entire program on blue jays, and I call that blue jays friends or foe, uh, and I let people, uh, you know, I got a lot of good comments on that about uh, how they, the people love blue jays and they with other people who really don't like blue jays. And that's really the story of the Corvid family as a whole. So first off, let's try this new program we're going to do here. We're going to switch um, up this screen so that you get uh, a, a better view of the bird and a you know, smaller view of me. And let's see, hopefully this is working uh, the way it should. So this is an American crow probably one of the best known birds uh, in North America and the corvid family, probably one of the best known families of birds in the entire world. The, the corvids uh, are uh, comprised of the crows, the, the uh, ravens, the jays, the magpies. Uh, so there's lots of different birds in this group. And well, they, they may not look that different. I mean, obviously a blue jay is much more colorful than uh, the American crow here, but they uh, their lifestyles have a lot of similarities, and they as a whole are a very aggressive bird. They are predators, um, and they are scavengers, and they are incredibly intelligent birds. Um, there have been lots of studies on um, these birds and how smart they are, and how they can go back and and, and find things uh, from that they have actually stashed from years ago. And, and, and ravens especially are known for uh, collecting uh, objects and, and they like, they're known to like shiny things. And there's a lot of intriguing things about them. Um, one of the, the things that I'm familiar with them from having done a lot of uh, breeding bird surveys. Um, and, and when you try to, when you're doing a survey like that, you're trying to, uh, confirm nesting, and there's lots of different ways to do that. But it's obviously if you find the nest with, and it's got young in it or eggs in it, that's a that's a great way to confirm nesting. Well, these birds are notorious for being hard to find their nest because they're very very secretive and sneaky when it comes to their nest. They're very vocal, and and you see them out in the open. But boy, when they're going returning to their nest, they tend to be very secretive, flying to a tree nearby their nest tree and, and hop in another tree and around and then down near the bottom of their tree and then up in the center of their tree until they work their way up to their nest, which is pretty cool. That's, that's obviously a great defense mechanism. So they're very sneaky when it comes to that. And why do why do people dislike them? Well, a lot of it has to do with that the, the nesting cycle for other birds because one of their favorite foods and one they, 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 they take care of their young is they rob baby birds from other birds' nests. Uh, I had a, a situation in North Carolina years ago where a guy had a, uh, a morning dove nest in a tree in his front yard, a pine tree, and he watched his crow come up and fa had found the, the mother on the nest. And the crow just harassed the mom to death, beat, beat his wings against the limbs. And finally, the mother morning dove flew off and the crow came down and took the baby out of the nest and took, flew off with it. So uh, they're known for that. And uh, this entire family of birds are known for that. I, I know whenever I was in England um, a few years back and my cousin over there, when we saw a magpie over there, and boy, he was it had nothing good to say about magpies. And the reason his reasoning was that very thing about them stealing baby birds out of nest. And it does tug on your heartstrings, your parental instincts kick in. And it's something that does, you know, it tugs on you. So I can understand why some people have that feeling. But it, we have to have that type of predator in nature. I mean, they're morning doves, especially are prolific nesters. They have lots of nests, lots of babies. And these birds, uh, you know, if all of them survived, it would, there would obviously be 
a lot more mourning doves out, out there than, than probably the habitat can handle. So having predators that do this kind of thing is important to keep nature in balance. And then we talk about the circle of life. You know, we have, you can't have life without death. And, and so crows uh, have really always gotten a bad rap about that, that kind of behavior, but they are important, uh, the scavengers. I know when we talk in our country, we're so used to turkey vultures, uh, you know, cleaning up uh, the road kills and, and, and things like that. Well, in the old world over in England, when we were, I was over there, they don't have vultures that, that, that do that. They have a lot of species of crows over there uh, that, that do a lot of the work that the vultures do in this country. So they do have that, that important niche and, and other places as well. And, and as far as the, the corvids that we have, um, it, they're, they're quite diverse. I mean, to attract a, you know, them to your yard quite often is if you provide any kind of food, the corvids are going to be able to find it. Crows, my crows are in my yard every so often, but they're usually picking up uh, anything that's fallen to the ground uh, underneath the feeders, and and of course they're picking up grubs and they're picking up all kinds of things that uh, that are out there. Whereas probably the most famous of the uh, the corvids that come to our our yards are the okay, come on. Add to stream. There it goes. All right. I'm figuring out this new program. Sorry about that. Uh, the Blue Jays. Uh, Blue Jays are beautiful crows, uh, and, and, and plain and simple. They're members of that corvid family. And, uh, and and we, you know, a lot of same thing. A lot of people love them because they're beautiful. They, they have great colors. Or they, they're very vocal. Uh, I like them because they chase away hawks. Uh, especially like Cooper's Hawks that visit my yard. The Blue Jays travel in family groups and they'll run those guys off. But the Blue Jays are, are crows. Uh, they're, they're just in that same group of birds. And their their habits are similar. They will steal baby birds out of nests and eggs out of nests as well. So you can see how they are. But one of their favorite, um, oop, that's a nice bird. We'll go to him next. The, the, uh, the bird... They, the, the thing that attracts blue jays the most, of course, are in shell peanuts. I love putting out in shell peanuts for them, um, and they will uh, come and take them and store them. Uh, they, they're gonna, they're, they'll cache their food. They're one of those birds that will store food in winter. Again, they're very, very smart, and they tend to re refine their food that they, they stash away there quite a bit. So, so blue jays are on the end of the spectrum of, of the most well known of the. the the corvids in our area, but we back when we have that American crow up here in Kansas City. This is uh, the the bird, large black bird that we see by far the most. If you live in other parts, uh, especially in the southern part of the United States, um, and in the southern part of Missouri, even this is a smaller crow. Although they're very hard to tell apart unless you got them together. Uh, this is a fish crow, and uh, I grew up with these guys and in, in the the southern United States, um, they are they, they're kind of funny. They have a little frog-like call compared to uh, the American crow, which is famous for its call, call, call. But fish crows are expanding, uh, and they are moving northward. And we're, we're getting them, uh, especially along the Missouri River here in the Kansas City area, they're getting documented more and more. Now, they, your care has to be taken. Um, when you're identifying them by their call, because a juvenile or a hatchling of this year, American crow will make that nasally kind of call that sounds like a fish crow. But in the springtime, they're easier. We, we've heard the, the the fish crows up at Weston Bend State Park. We've heard them down at, uh, along the river. And that's pretty much, you know, where they are. They're, they, they, they tend, we tend to find them in wet areas first. So at English Landing Park, we've had them down there in the spring uh, calling. Uh, with their little double note ah, ah, caught a call. Um, and so the fish crow, a little bit smaller, but uh, very hard to tell apart visually, that's for sure. Um, but they're, they, they're both here, and they, depending on where you're watching this from. And then the bird that, that uh, in that family that really gets uh, misidentified a lot or gets reported so much here in Missouri that really doesn't occur here. Um, I don't know the last time we've had a uh, a common raven sighting in the state of Missouri, but the uh, if you travel, especially north and then west, the mountains and even in the higher elevations and stuff to the east, uh, the common raven is an incredible bird. Um, the, the, <laughs> the I've heard it said that the uh, a, an American crow is a blackbird with a big bill, and 
the uh, the common raven is a, a black a black bill with a black bird attached to it because the, the bill is huge on uh, uh, the common ravens and very very smart birds um, but mainly if you live in the west or even the southwest or to the north that the, the ravens are much more common than they are here uh, we just don't get them in this part of the country and, and point south really so uh, the ravens are a, a, an amazing bird uh, and then we talked about our blue jays and then we had the uh, these two got pictures here, the, the blue jays, and they're, again, very beneficial birds, members of that family. I love attracting them to my yard. But you guys that live in other parts of the country, the Stellar's jay, uh, a beautiful bird of the west, especially the mountains, the higher elevations. I've seen them in Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico. I've, I've seen them in, in pretty much all those and the, and the mountainous regions to the west. It's a beautiful one. I remember I was in Yosemite uh, one time, uh, bird watching, eating lunch, uh, sitting on the ground, eating a sandwich. And uh, I had a Stellar Jay, which came up and almost landed on my foot. He was walking uh, on the ground, all, hopping all around around me, waiting for me to throw him a scrap of bread off of uh, my sandwich. Um, but he was very bold. He wanted to come in very, very close. So um, if you live in the West, uh, the Stellar J, especially up a higher elevation, is, is, is a member of that Corbin family you may be getting. And then another member of that, uh, that, that same kind of higher elevation in the Corbin family is the Gray J. They used to call them Canada Jays, but now they're called Gray Jays. Um, an incredible bird. Uh, another nickname for these guys are Camp Robbers. And they will come in. They're very bold, and they'll snatch, you know, a Cheeto right off the table in front of you, you know, when you're eating lunch, kind of thing out there. And uh, in, in north and west, I've seen them Minnesota, Maine, uh, you know, Colorado, places like that. But mainly at higher elevations, um, a, a beautiful bird you know, that sneaks around, very skulky, and then comes in whenever food is near, and and will give you very bold at that point where he thinks he's going to get a free meal. So. That a member of the Corvid family, and one of the most beautiful members of the Corvid family in North America is the Green Jay, and uh, this is very much limited to the lower the lower part of Texas and along the Rio Grande Valley uh, that area. Uh, a, a nickname they used to call it Aztec Jay. Mexican. This is not the Mexican. This is the Aztec Jay that they used to call it. But that look at the colors on this bird. Absolutely brilliant, stunning. The uh, uh, hi Morgan. I just saw and this is again my new platform. My messages pop up there. Uh, Morgan, my daughter just commented. So the, uh, the this if you get down to the lower Rio Grande Valley, the McAllen area, uh, uh, oh well, West Laco, all the way up and down the Rio Grande Valley, this is a bird you will be treated with. Ooh. Absolutely beautiful. So, and then probably the least. Uh, maybe Jay looking at the bunch is the uh, magpie. And we have two different magpies in North America. This is a black-billed magpie. And that's the most widespread to the mountains in Colorado and areas like that up and down. And then in California, there's an endemic species called the yellow-billed magpie. And that is just, and again, like it, you would think, the, yellow, the bill is all yellow, but it's confined strictly within the boundaries of the, the state of California. So another member of the Corvid family. So they are diverse. They are beautiful. They are, are play beneficial roles in the environment. Yes, I absolutely love having the blue jays in my yard, and I do not mind the crows. They're very curious. They're very, oh, smart birds, and and I love to to have them. So, uh, should you try to attract them to the yard? Well, there's not a lot to really do to try to attract them. What I find is that if you feed birds, you're going to have, they're going to have American crows or any member of the corvids are going to come by and check on you. There are a couple more species, the scrub jays, um, the Florida scrub jay, the island scrub jay, the woodhouse scrub jay. I didn't have a really good picture of those, um, uh, but they're, they, they will come into feeders as well. Uh, beautiful, mainly Western species um, that you can get out there. And then another Mexican species called the brown jay, which is a quite large jay that, again, the Rio Grande Valley uh, is rare along that area. But lots of members of the Corvid family, and they're uh, a, a joy to um, to have and visit and learn learn more about. So the let's get back to this. Hi, where I'm back here. So 
Oh, well, it's a great idea for a program. I hope uh, you learned a little bit about this wonderful family of birds. Uh, please uh, send in ideas for future programs. If you like the program, please like, give us a like, give us a share. Um, if you have any ideas for future programs, please send them in because we want to talk about what you want us to talk about. And hopefully, you'll let me know what you think about this new format. Hopefully, this, this went over well and people were able to see it. And we'll uh, try it with maybe some expanded features in the future. So thanks so much. Come by. Let's talk birds. <laughs>